We then move to questions without notice. Are there any questions? I call the Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Has the Prime Minister ever participated in any discussions where a unilateral deployment of Australian troops to Iraq was considered? I call the Honourable the Prime Minister. Well, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. And, Madam Speaker, for the benefit, for the, for the benefit of the Leader of the Opposition, let me, let me read a statement which has been recently issued by the Secretary of the Department of Defence and the Chief of the Defence Force. On Saturday, the 21st of February, the Weekend Australian reported that the Prime Minister had raised with Australia's leading military planners the idea of a unilateral invasion of Iraq with 3,500 Australian ground troops to confront the Islamic State terrorist group. The Chief of the Defence Force, Air Chief Marshal Mark Binskin, and the Secretary of the Department of Defence, Mr Dennis Richardson, advise that this claim is false. At no point has the Prime Minister raised that idea with the ADF and or the Department of Defence, formally or informally, directly or indirectly, said Air Chief Marshal Binskin and Secretary Richardson. I call the Honourable Member for Robertson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Will the Prime Minister update the House on actions the government is taking to keep Australians safe from terrorism? I call the Honourable the Prime Minister. Well, Madam Speaker, I, I do thank the Member for Robertson for a question. And Madam, Madam Speaker, as the Member for Robertson well knows, the safety of our community is the highest responsibility of government. And Madam Speaker, I want to thank uh, all those who are involved in discharging that responsibility on our behalf. The Australian Federal Police, uh, the State Police, members of the Australian Defence Force, uh, members of ASIO and our other security agencies. And regrettably, Madam Speaker, their vigilance is more necessary than ever because the terror threat to our country is high and rising. I regret to say, Madam Speaker, that there are now uh, well over 100 Australians are fighting with terror groups in Iraq and Syria. There are now almost 150 Australians known to be supporting uh, these terror groups here at home. Even more regrettably, Madam Speaker, there are about 400 individuals uh, known to our security agencies who are talking about violence against their fellow Australians. The inspiration for all this, Madam Speaker, is the Islamist death cult uh, Daesh or ISIL, which is responsible for the new dark age now settling over significant parts of Syria and Iraq. And, Madam Speaker, as we know, to our cost, this death cult is reaching out to our country. Uh, we have saw seen uh, the frenzied attack on two policemen in Victoria, uh, and just uh, before Christmas, we saw the Martin Place atrocity inspired by this death cult. But, Madam Speaker, our community is fighting back. Uh, this government uh, has uh, put an extra $630 million into our police and security agencies. There are now counter-terrorism teams at all our international airports. Uh, there's biometric screening being rolled out to stop people uh, leaving on false passports. There's 49 additional AFP officers uh, working on counter-terrorism. Uh, and, Madam Speaker, we are making a much bigger effort to counter online radicalisation. Today, Madam Speaker, I released our counter-terrorism review. There will be a national counter-terrorism coordinator to bring the same drive and focus to this as we have brought to uh, Operation Sovereign Borders and Operation Bring Them Home. There will be changes to the Citizenship Act uh, to strip uh, or suspend the citizenship of dual nationals involved in terrorism. And, Madam Speaker, we will be strengthening our prohibitions on racial and religious vilification. This is about Australian values. We should never forget the pledge that all of us are encouraged to make at citizenship ceremonies. I pledge myself to Australia and its people whose democratic beliefs I share, uh, whose rights and liberties I share, whose laws I will uphold and obey. Madam Speaker, we will keep our country safe. We will never sacrifice our liberties in order to defend them, but, Madam Speaker, we will never let people take advantage of us either. I call the Honourable Lee, 
Member for Sydney. Thank you. My question is to the Prime Minister. I refer to reports in the Australian newspaper that the Prime Minister suggested unilaterally sending a thousand Australian troops to eastern Ukraine last year. Did the Prime Minister consider such action? I call the Honourable the Prime Minister. Um, Madam Speaker, uh, uh, in the days immediately after the shooting down of MH17 by Russian-backed rebels, uh, in the days when those Russian-backed rebels uh, uh, were refusing to release the bodies uh, to the international community, uh, we did talk uh, to our Dutch uh, uh, friends about what might be done to ensure uh, that those uh, bodies came back to their loved ones. Yeah, we did yeah, talk yeah, to the yeah, Dutch yeah, about yeah, this, apologies. as the Australian people would have expected. We were not going to allow right. dead Australians to be violated by Russian-backed yeah, 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 yeah. We were going to stand up for the rights of their families, Madam yeah. Speaker, and we will never, Member for never apologise for standing we'll up for the rights of Australians here and abroad. So, Madam Speaker, we did talk uh, to the Dutch about what might have been done in those perilous circumstances, because certainly they were perilous circumstances, what we could do to ensure those bodies came back to their loved ones. And there was talk with the Dutch about a joint operation. Madam Speaker, was it suggested, was the number that the Deputy Leader of the Opposition uh, puts to me suggested by me? Uh, no. Uh, was this some kind of a frivolous exercise by me? No. Uh, this arose out of the most important and the most necessary discussions uh, between the Dutch military and our own to uphold and defend our vital national interests and to do the right thing by the people of our country. Yeah. Yeah.